Hello, lacrosse friends, and welcome to the culmination of the Players Box Lacrosse Jim Thorpe Challenge. It is championship time, and it is the two teams that most people, I think, were expecting, anticipating getting to this final. Um, Elmira gave a good push, but it is the Jim Thorpe All-Americans who went 4-1 and one in the PBLA season and then a perfect 3-0 and in the Jim Thorpe Challenge before crushing the Binghamton Bombers yesterday. They will face off against the Syracuse Spark, who are 2-2 two and two in the PBLA season, but a huge change after their second game, completely revamped their playing style and became formidable. They went 2-1 and one in the round robin portion of the Jim Thorpe Challenge and held off a game Elmira Renegades Club yesterday for a 14-9 win that was far closer than that score suggests. Elmira had some great chances. Edmund Cathers was outstanding between the pipes for Syracuse. Made a huge difference. He is starting once again today. And for the Jim Thorpe All-Americans wearing their cream with the natty blue striping. Gorgeous uniforms. I actually even prefer the blue with the cream striping. Beautiful. Anyway, that goalie will be Craig Seneca. Once again, it's Mike Atwood for the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. Ross Cree for the Syracuse Spark wearing their blue or dark, dark blue jerseys. The black and blue fade today. And we're underway with the championship game. So glad you can be with us, lacrosse friends. I am Stephen Stamp. Very pleased to be bringing you this game. The All-Americans have a bit of an aura about them. They seem to be the favorites. I think Syracuse has a real shot, but Jim Thorpe's good. There's a save by Cathers. Lane Smith is dangerous. He is stopped by Edmund Cathers. Another save. Justin Martin, who's been one of the best players on the floor in pretty much every game he's played in, picked that loose ball up. Oh, and there's the first goal. If you had a uh, derby going for who would score first, Daniel Kritkowski probably not at the top of the list, but he has played well, and he rockets that one into the far top corner. Look at that placement. You see from this angle, it's just that slight dip. Kritkowski just enough to get Cathers dropping the left shoulder and put it right where the shoulder had been. Bill O'Brien will come up with that ball. O'Brien, of course, a physical presence, menacing on the floor. Solid with the stick. Had a couple scoring chances yesterday. And didn't quite bury those. Here's Caleb Benedict. Speaking of scoring chances, that's Rio Johnson. That one's wide. Caleb Benedict, a sock trick yesterday. Just 21 years old. Still has a year of junior lacrosse left. There's Craig Seneca with some pressure. That's a four-second count. Yeah. Great pressure by Rio Johnson, who is a spectacularly talented young player. Derek Hobbs, or sorry, Zach Hobbs. Trying to pick up the rebound. Patrick Timothy swooped it away from him. He's taking off. Look at the speed on Patrick Timothy. That's one of the first things I asked him when he was telling me. I talked to him before the first game of the season, which was also in the PBLA season, between these two games, up in Six Nations. And I said, you know, what's your what's your thing? You faster you this. He's like, yeah, I'm fast. And <laughs> you can see how, how quick he goes. He is from Florida. From Plantation, Florida, went to Coker College and uh, is stoked about this chance to play box across and uh, develop in the game. There's Lane Smith, great outlet pass to Jonathan Jimerson, the save by the arm of Edmund Cathers. Jimerson's been very good throughout the season as well. Almost dipped that outlet pass. Nate Schultzke makes the toss up to Jay Chubb. Chubb will leave it there from Tommy Palasek, wearing the number eight today without his name on because he didn't have his black and blue uniform. He only had the bright, bright orange that you'll have seen if you've been watching the games. That's his 84 normally. Here's a chance for Cameron Poppy. He drops it. Gets flattened and we're going to have a loose ball foul. Fresh 30 and possession for the Syracuse Spark. Syracuse believes they can compete here. I think most people think of Jim Thorpe as the favorites, but Syracuse has really played well. Here's an opportunity for Dylan Lyons driving to the net. He's been a revelation. Papa with the rip. That one's blocked out front. Papa's going to track it down. He'll get there before Dalen Hill can. They've got eight to shoot. And a player already off to the bench. Hank DeLeal is back. And Dwight Biro, the captain, is out on the floor. And you will see a lot of that because of the rules. 
which are a little different if you have not seen PBL lacrosse. First of all, it started as the PBLA, got through five weeks, just there were, you know, trials and tribulations of a new league. Play was suspended, but Mammoth Sports and Entertainment, the players and the coaches all worked together to make this Jim Thorpe challenge happen, keep things going, and there's been some terrific lacrosse. There's a save by Edmund Cathers. But the rules are a little unique. One is, I guess a little unique is nonsensical because if something's unique, it's unique. Anyway, the unique rules in this, one is it's the old Sealax rule for changes. You have to leave the floor by your defensive door, the one closest to your goalie. You have to go onto the floor by the offensive door. So you can't just have your forwards run off the floor, have a defender come out the other end of the bench and take away transition. Instead, you have twice the length of the bench. Here comes a bit of a breakout for Jim Thorpe. And Zach Hobbs is immediately on Lane Smith. Smith is devastating if you give him space and you can see how aware Syracuse is of his potential. Back door, they lost him for a moment and it almost turned into a chance as Brett Beto threw that hard pass across. Jay Chubb goes in and gets it. Smith dives after it and the All-Americans swarming, they get it. Oh, Justin Martin tried to pick it up and go immediately into a dive to dunk it, but he ended up stepping in the crease as he lost control of the ball. Here's Caleb Benedict. This shifty little move makes the pass ahead. They complete the change. The other rule you're going to see is teams, each team can once per half opt to take a penalty shot instead of a minor penalty when the other team commits an infraction. Carmen Papa has the ball tip, the pass tip away from him, but he gets it back. Long outside shot from Ryan Dylan Donahue. Beto takes the pass from Smith. He's one on four, so he's going to flip it over and they'll set things up. You see a lot of five-man units instead of the offense-defense game that has become the norm in so much of the cross the box across these days. Biro lost his stick. He's getting it back. They left a man open for a moment. They got back on him, though. Cam Senek takes the shot. Ben Austin tried to reach him, but Edmund Cathers was able to swallow it up. And here come the spark the other way. We're five minutes plus in, just one goal so far. It has been a high-scoring league. The rules do tend to help generate transition. Jim Thorpe scored a ton of transition goals yesterday against Binghamton. They are deadly. That is why, I mean, you mentioned earlier, Biro. Oh, that almost went in. It got through. Craig Seneca, the just little late in the shot clock fling to try and get a reset. Oh, what a pickoff by Hank Delisle. Steals it from Jonathan Jimerson. Mikey Atwood there to cover him. Delisle finds man off the bench. Here's Eddie Buhal. Nice job avoiding the trail check from Curtis Woodland. So there's another one. You wouldn't really see Curtis Woodland playing a lot of defense. The uh, scoring champion by far of the Founders Cup when he played for Allure as the Mohawks won the Canadian Junior B Championship. He is playing D here just like just about everybody else. Lane Smith in particular. Watch Lane Smith and watch how fast he is. He's gotten into some of the best shape of his life, I would think. He's still got the hands that allowed him to score 72 goals in a season of Junior B lacrosse with Six Nations Rebels. There's a rip from Patrick Timothy. And he is stoked to get that one. He's not scored a ton this year as he is adjusting to the box game, but he has shown some pretty good chops developing his game. And this is a beauty just coming across the top and just a little bit late, late getting there for the check with Sky Sunday. As you can see, a little bit of a pick from Krakowski, actually not on Sunday. Sunday had to pop up, and Timothy buries it to make it 2-0 for the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. They can score in bunches, and it's going to be critical for Syracuse to not let that happen. Randy Chrysler, the head coach for the All-Americans, basically said, we're just going to play our game, keep doing what we do. They play a fast game, team game, spread things around, a lot of talent, a lot of grit. Syracuse head coach Ron Kogan, he feels like the two games that they've played, the first one back in December in Six Nations, the first of the PBLA games, and then the first game also in this Jim Thorpe Challenge Series, with Jim Thorpe winning both of those, he feels like just throw them at. They feel like they shot themselves in the foot. The first one, they've been playing, they've completely changed how they play. Here's Woodland on the run, hard rip, and it comes all the way out, gets past Rio Johnson. Did it touch him? Doesn't matter, because it's picked up before center by Cam Simpson. So, the over and back is irrelevant. There's Justin Martin over to Lane Smith. Hard rip by Simpson. 
The rebound straight out to Beto. Woodland, nice change of direction. Whips the pass across, but it gets away. Here's Rio Johnson. Johnson, who played in the Laxni tournament last fall in Utica. It's a pretty cool facility with three new rinks added to the one that was already existing there. And it's become a terrific facility. Carpet for all of them. Be a good place to have some lacrosse tournaments. Casey Swamp went through the crease. Good heads up call by John Civic, the head, one of the uh, officials, along with Clint Doolittle and Danny Tavares. I am Stephen Stamp and this is the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game. We're past the midway point of the first period. We'll have a media timeout shortly, but first Rod Squire's gonna try and do something. He loses it, Kent Baker Printup has it. Rip from the outside, but partially blocked as Bureau got stick on stick and limited the effectiveness of Jimerson's shot. Nate Schultzke couldn't quite catch that pass, and Baker Printup will grab it after Jimerson swatted him out of the way, but Schultzke battles to get it back. He is a hard-working young player from Oswego, New York. Here's Zach Hops, the Aquasasne native. Played in the President's Cup with the with the Bucks. Oh, what a finish! Driving to the net. Carmen Papa, who has really flashed his skill throughout this series. That is a beautiful underneath cut and tucking it near pipe just past Craig Sending to get the spark on the board. Ooh, that right foot's close to the crease. Let's watch it from this angle. Is it in the air? Oh yeah, no, he's good. He actually got the right foot arcing up around the curve of the crease with it. I think it was good. Brett Beto going for the faceoff against Ross Cree, and Patrick Timothy will come away with it. Passes it down to Beto. Oh, he had Kritkowski on the crease, tried to get it to him. It wasn't there, it was snagged by Cathers. Great pass, but what a save by Seneca on the other end, robbing Sky Sunday. Here's Timothy. He's got the two different shoes, the exact opposite of the pair he was wearing yesterday. So obviously he's got a couple of pairs that he finds similar or the same, and he's sharing them from day to day, and it looks pretty cool. Tim Zimmel, pass a little behind Chubb. Chubb's able to grab it. Here's Sky Sunday. Little fake, and then the pass to Benedict. That one got away from him. Six on the shot clock, so Dylan Lyons will just rip that one, and they get a reset, Tommy Palasek. Races in, switches hands, and scores! That looked so much like a play that Tom Schreiber scored a goal on for the Toronto Rock a few years ago. I'm just having flashbacks as he just comes out from low, swings around, switches hands, and lets it go. Finds the far side, a different spot in the net, but that is a beautiful spot by Tommy Palisic. Look at the hustle to get it as he comes out. Jim Thorpe a little bit lackadaisical on the defense, and just like that, Palisic ties it. We're 2-2 two -two with 5-12 to go. Rod Squire comes away with the ball. Bounce pass, tries to get it through traffic. He gets it there to Tyler Kahn. He is knocked down by Bill O'Brien. Big check by O'Brien. Oh, penalty coming. And I guess it's while Kahn was on the ground he got checked. So a delayed call against Syracuse. I don't think there was a call in the original hit. It didn't, I didn't see a hand go up when O'Brien knocked Con down. Here's Baker print up, flips it down low. Con rips one. Rebound, fresh 30. There should be a fresh 30. You gotta reset that. They haven't reset yet. Lane Smith rips it, it won't matter. Because Edmund Cathers is gonna swallow that one, just smother the shot. And we will see what the call is. It looks like it's gonna be Eddie Buhal going. So it's the illegal cross check. So yeah, with the player on the turf, we got the cross check down to the player on the ground. Can't do it. First penalty, first power play of the game with just four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. We're not seeing a penalty shot. Thought we might have it right away, but they're gonna save that. Keep it in their back pocket. Randy Chrysler waiting. 
Lefty strong as Smith is at the top. He's got Woodland over the shooter spot on the lefty side. It's a hard rip from Krakowski, but Dwight Barrow just shakes it off. Slight rub where it hit. Oakley Thomas behind the net, gets the pass, but it just popped out of his stick. He was getting ready for the dive already. Bill O'Brien runs into him. That's a couple of big dudes with O'Brien and Thomas. And it's just flung down the floor. Pretty heads up play by Dwight Biro because there was some trouble developing as the ball was bouncing around and they didn't have much time. The eight second count was in effect. Woodland, hidden ball trick. Smith really sells it, but Evan Cathers was ready. Lane Smith absolutely let a phantom rocket blast off from the top of the formation as Woodland took his shot from over the other side. Zach Hopps showing he's still got the wheels that have made him a well-known young player. Here's Palasek killing some time. 16 left on the shot clock. Under a minute on the penalty. Hopps was heading for the bench. He's going to wait in case Palasek's getting in some trouble. That's a heads-up play by Hopps. Now he's just back in the defensive zone. I think he was heading to the bench. He'll go back and play D. Donahue and Palasek will get to the bench. Papa and Hops go back for another shift of D along with O'Brien and Casey Swamp on the penalty kill. Brad Squire up at the top. They're still strong left with Jonathan Jimerson at the top this time. He's got Justin Martin. Martin was thinking, thinking. Jimerson rips it. That's on the back side of the mesh. Long outlet pass. Oh, Caleb Benedict couldn't get it. He does now. Oh, he tries to pass over to Rio Johnson. Boy, the pair of them are, they throw behind the backs as smoothly and as easily as most people throw anything. Benedict wants it. He has the stick loaded by his ear. He'll get it now. Shoots quickly, but misses on the far side. Again, Benedict with the sock trick yesterday. Can't quite reach up and get that one, but he tipped it. Actually, it wound up going towards Seneca, but got away. Caleb Benedict, who's cousins with the Thompson brothers, Jeremy, Heine, Miles, and Lyle. Caleb's grandmother, Leanne, is here watching. Had a nice chat with her before the game. When I first saw her, I have to admit, I thought there's a nice pickup by Bureau. I actually thought it was D. Thompson, the, the four brothers' mother. And then uh, she said, and I, and I asked her, she said, no, that's, uh, yeah, Dee's my sister. So I was like, okay, that would explain the, the resemblance, because, boy, they look alike. So I remember Dee originally explaining how the boys, the four boys used to split into teams when they were playing backyard, and it was the, they feel like two of them look, <laughs> two of them look alike and the other two look alike, so they would go on those teams. Oh, picked off by Lane Smith. He'll spin back away and just fights off the check. He is so strong. That ball was played by Dylan Donahue's hand, I thought. Gets away with it though. Gets it ahead to Palasek. Yeah, Smith reminding me of like a Mike Messenger, De Hogan, Nanticoke, the way he can just burst through people. One minute remaining in the first quarter. One minute to play. Final minute of this first quarter. It has been fast and it has been really good lacrosse. Jim Thorpe will get it with 51 to play and set up a possession. Obviously can't go for last shot here. See how long they take. They're not going for the two for one it doesn't look like. Or are they? Oh, nice feed through. That's not a two for one. That's just a great scoring chance for Woodland. But he's turned aside by Cathers. Eddie Buhal, nice job running onto that pass from Donahue. Gets over center. Oh, he's getting himself in trouble. Had to flip the pass ahead to Sky Sunday who was surrounded by cream jerseys. And that's going to be a turnover now. Jim Thorpe can wait for last shot. So far, they're not calling. Are they going to take a timeout? You get one timeout per half. They've not called Seneca to the bench for the extra attacker. We got a pretty good scoring chance for Cam Simpson. Now the pass ahead to Sunday. Lane Smith breaks it up. Five seconds. Kritkowski. Oh, he's got Simpson. Oh, he had Simpson. He had time for one more pass, but thought it was gonna, the buzzer was gonna go and let it rip from outside the restraining line and miss. We will be tied up 2-2 through 15 minutes of play. I'm Steven Stamp. This is the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship Game on Lacrosse TV. It's been a fun, fast first 15 minutes. Come back and join us for the second quarter. Welcome back, lacrosse friends to the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game of Players Box Lacrosse. 
It is 2-2, a thrilling first quarter between the Jim Thorpe All-Americans and the Syracuse Spark, the one and two seeds from the round robin of the Challenge Series. If you weren't following the, the way things went, it was an exciting, tumultuous season for the new PBLA. It was the Professional Box Across Association, which got through five weeks and then unfortunately had to suspend operations. The Mammoth Sports and Entertainment, which runs things out of this building, the first arena here in Elmira, along with the players and the coaches worked very hard to try and get things together and make this series happen. And there is lots of optimism about a league coming back next year. Here's a pass to Benedict. Whips it across, it's picked off Justin Martin. He's fast and he's smooth. Look at him glide up the floor and he wisely pulls it up. Feeds it through to Dalen Hill. Collision there, the ball runs, it rolls away. Pass to Schultzke. It was almost tipped by Woodland, so Schultzke double clutched. He did get it, then gets flattened by Woodland as he takes the shot. Timothy going after it, gets away from him though, and swooping in to grab it was Rio Johnson. Johnson, as I was saying, played for the Onondaga Lasers. Onondaga Community College at the Laxni back in the fall. It was so fun to see them play in box. A bunch of really talented players getting into the box. Some of them had some experience, uh, Rio among them. Some of them did not have box experience, but they had a blast. It was great to see them. And I would love to have actually seen some of their games after in the field game, because I know the experience they had there was gonna help them out on the field. Jay Chubb, nice pass. The shot just wide from Donahue. That's going to be an over and back. It wasn't touched by any Jim Thorpe player, so Curtis Woodland will scoop it up. Jimerson, or Riley Johnson, sorry, a couple of fakes, tries to get it to Lane Smith, gets away, but he does recover it himself. Hard rip and Cathers, again, just absorbing that shot. His rebound control has been fantastic. Dwight Barrow, the captain, makes the pass out to alternate Billy O'Brien. Ryan up to Carmen Papa. Dive into the crease. And it's gonna be a violation eventually on Papa who has scored some gorgeous goals right in that crease area over the course of the season. Cam Simpson, nice sidearm pass across. Sky Sunday picks up Baker Printop and doesn't give him anywhere to go. So Baker Printop gives it up and gets the offense rolling. Here's Kyler Kilgore. Son of the great Darius Kilgore. Oakley Thomas pulls it down. Casey Swamp on him. It's through. A hesitation from Tavares on the Danny Tavares on the call. So I wonder if Cather's got a bit. The timing is Thomas. Thomas's momentum carried him into the crease. Here's the shot. Oh yeah, no, that went in pretty much right away. It's a good call. He was. It was over the line before he got into the crease. I'm not actually sure he even went into the crease. He did a pretty good job avoiding it. Boy, Oakley Thomas, big dude with soft hands and really sharp feet. Such good footwork. You now he's played some for the Halifax Thunderbirds. Had a huge win last night, beating the Toronto Rock. And a critical time for them as they're struggling to get into a playoff position at this point. In the NLL, that is. Dalen Hill takes the pass from Justin Martin. Delayed penalty coming. Stopped by Cathers. It'll be picked up by Biro, and we're going to have a slashing call against Zach Hops. No indication yet as to whether they're going to apply the penalty shot, employ the penalty shot. I'm a little surprised we're not really seeing them getting employed, except that, boy, the... Um, the goalies have really increased their save percentage as the season has gone on, as they got you gotten used to it. Early in the in the PBLA schedule, teams actually had the option to take two penalty shots per half instead of penalties, instead of power plays. We quickly realized it was too much. There was like eight penalty shots a game, and uh, guys were lighting it up. Players like Skylar Thomas and um, Caleb Benedict for Syracuse, uh, Owen Hill from Elmira were almost automatic, but we've seen even some of the top penalty shot guys getting stopped. The goalies have adjusted, and uh, Lane Smith, though, did score a beauty yesterday. Here's a diving dunk attempt, no good. Palisac got the shot off, but can't, Craig Seneca made the save. 
Gets it out to Kritkowski. Just gets over the timeline. Remember, it is the officials count, not the 30 second clock. Sometimes the 30 is a little off of when the play actually gets rolling. Here's Lane Smith. Blast it, saved by Cather, just in front of him. Woodland reached in, tried to scoop it up. You can go in and get the ball, but Cather's and his D were able to come away with it. Here's Carmen Papa. He's going to wait for guys to get out. 52 seconds left in the penalty. They've got 18 on the shot clock. There's Lane Smith, and I, I asked about Lane Smith playing. Oh, Papa to the net, scores! Beautiful goal, Carmen Papa, and the flex after. He's fired up. He's still going. What a play. We saw the underneath cut earlier from, what was that that got the, the one of the early goals? This is just a beauty by Papa. The double team in Lane Smith, I was just about to say Lane Smith has been playing good defense, but he definitely got turnstiled there as Papa just spun underneath, felt the, the position of Smith being a little bit high on him as the low man and just drop step, spins through, quick to the net, tucks it home near side. And the spark have tied it up. That goal was announced as Palisac, but it was definitely Carmen Papa. Or 3-3. Woodland, up to Jimerson. They're still on the power play. That was a shorthanded goal. 30 left on the penalty. It's a save, but it's gonna go straight back, so a fresh 30 for Jim Thorpe. Eddie Buhal has it. Loose ball still, eventually it pops out to Cam Seneca. Eight on the penalty. Dalen Hill's got a man off the bench. Great job by Jay Chubb to pick up the first guy. And then Hill winds up floating one just over the crossbar. Nice awareness by the youngster Jay Chubb, who's also very talented, but that shows a good lacrosse IQ to get that man coming off the bench, who was the danger. Schultzke hands it off, zips over to the bench. Here's Hops to Donahue. If you were an MLL fan, you would remember, you might remember seeing Dylan Donahue play in Major League. Nice trail check by Lane Smith after Rio Johnson spun to get past him, but, John, but Smith comes back and gets it. That one's wide. Wow, almost hit the ceiling. It's a high ceiling here. That one went way up top above the lights. Didn't quite get to the roof. Ceiling, roof's outside. Justin Martin, we're back at even strength. Five minutes gone in the second quarter, it's 3-3. Both the defenses and goalies really working hard to contain things. And the O guys getting back, taking away transition opportunities. There's Benedict, he's gonna run. He's got Donahue with him. Donahue goes to the bench. Out comes Dylan Lyons. They get it to Delisle. Papa, the last goal scorer. Papa going to the net again. Four. Jim Thorper's on him. Benedict stopped on the crease. He had the sock trick yesterday. Stymied so far. Fresh 30 though, as Benedict picked up his own rebound off that in close chance. And that one's picked off by Justin Martin. Nice job by Sunday to take a good angle. Martin looking for his teammates. Realizes he's got Jim. Riley Johnson, a lefty on his offside over there and covered, so he doesn't make the pass. Now he tries to get one through. It was eventually picked up. Rod Squire taking his time. Sorry, that was Kent Baker print up. Oakley Thomas has the ball knocked out of his stick, but it didn't. They didn't touch the ball in the D. Nice play by Caleb Benedict. Wow, what a what a talented young man. Oakley Thomas falls to the floor. And, Caleb Benedict gives him a point, and Caleb Benedict should have been a little more focused on getting the ball across center because he had an eight second count. Ron Kogan's not happy about that. He says, no, I, I mean, he might be upset at the officials. But looked like Benedict was maybe showboating just a touch. Yeah, he'll learn from that. He's a smart young man. Yeah. Dwight Barrow Jr. on the run, setting a pick for Tommy Palasek, who has the ball. There goes Palasek underneath. I think it was Palasek that scored the beauty underneath before. It was. 
he and Papa. So maybe that's something Syracuse is thinking. They can get underneath and get drives to the crease. 12 seconds to shoot Rio Johnson. Watch out, the ball can come from anywhere. Rio Johnson playing that lax eye in the fall. What a gorgeous pass he made. The one hand behind the head flip. Now Hank Delisle has picked off a ball. He finds Johnson coming back. Bounce shot stopped by Seneca. Here's Dalen Hill. Sky Sunday, nice awareness of the pick coming. Eventually, Elaine Smith, just so strong, he still made it happen. Sunday will scoop that one up now after the pass didn't get through. <laughs> Past the midway point of this second quarter. Low scoring game. It's been fast, there have been chances, but the defenses and goalies conspiring to limit the scoring so far. Hard rip from Benedict on his offside. Seneca had to be sharp. Scooped up by Dylan Lyons and they've got a fresh 30. Benedict trying to go underneath. Timothy takes it away. Oh, what a rocket from Chubb. And that is way up near the roof or the ceiling as well after it goes off the shoulder cap of Craig Seneca. Here's Lyons. Lyons 6'5", 200. 215 pounds, he's a big athletic dude. Still a young player, just just a sophomore when he, uh, when he started playing this league. There's Hops coming away with it. Diving attempt, tries to the backhand. Just, I think he may have landed in the crease before it would have gone in anyway, but he was a bit wide, so it didn't really matter. Riley Johnson takes the pass. Couple of Syracuse players back again, the spark. Being responsible, getting back, taking away the transition game that has been bread and butter for Jim Thorpe. That shot wide from Kyler Kilgore. The All-Americans have not trailed a lot throughout this season. Nice job to run through the check there. But last week they were behind in the semi, or in the before the semis, in the uh, last game of the round robin. They were down by three goals to the Elmira Renegades with four minutes to play. Here's a dive to the net. Stopped, it was a crease violation first by Dylan Donahue. And Jim Thorpe came back, scored five goals in those four minutes to take a 16-14 win. So even if they do get behind her, they, they seem to be have no problems with playing close games. Here's Jimerson with a rip. That goes widen up into the stands. <laughs> A young fan right below me is racing over to try and get that ball. He wants it. Oh, and he got beat to it. He went a long way. But somebody who just had to pop up a couple rows managed to get to it first. Here's Caleb Benedict. Spins. Penalty coming. It's going to be a high stick on Bill O'Brien. That will be our media timeout with 414 to go. An exciting Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game. 3-3, Spark, and All-Americans. I'm Steven Stamp. This is the PBL Jim Thorpe Challenge on Lacrosse TV. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game. 3-3 with 4.14 to go in the second quarter. And we are going to see a penalty shot on the high-sticking penalty to Bill O'Brien. Randy Chrysler, the head coach of Jim Thorpe, is elected to use his penalty shot. Again, once per half, teams can opt to have a penalty shot instead of taking a power play. And Justin Martin, who scored, has scored some beautiful breakaway goals. A pretty logical guy. Lane Smith is deadly as well. Martin will take the shot. And the Americans look like they will be taking the penalty shot. Conversation between John Civic and Randy Chrysler. Sure why they couldn't have had this conversation during the break we just took, but away we go. Now we're ready. Justin Martin is ready. Play is blown in. Here he comes. Heading out wide. Cather's hugging his post. Left foot on the goal line. Steps out. Nice save. Martin just went for the quick shot. He has scored plenty of goals like that, just picking his spot, but Cather's who made a great save yesterday on a penalty shot as well. Will 
So Bill O'Brien will serve the two minutes. On the shots, on the plays where you opt for the penalty shot, the player does serve the two minutes. Much like a player who has a five minute major, doesn't come out after two goals are scored by the opposing team. You go back to even strength, but he stays in and serves that time. Justin Martin, who took the penalty shot, has the ball here. Takes a chop from Jay Chubb, just glides through it. Here's Lane Smith. Pulls it down, shoots far side, just missed. Cathers may have got a touch of that. We're gonna have a holding penalty on Justin Martin. He's a little perplexed. You don't see a lot of holding penalties in the offensive zone. Clint Doolittle caught that one. Now, are we gonna see the penalty shot the other way? There's only 3.48 left in the half. Syracuse has not taken their chance. Will Caleb Bennett, yeah it is. Ron, John, Ron Jacobs, Ron Kogan. Ron Jacobs, Ron Kogan just crossed his arms, a penalty shot signal. And here comes Caleb Benedict. So Cather's made the big save at the other end. Will that give the Spark the chance to go ahead here? Craig Seneca on his goal line. He's set, the ball's up in the air and here comes Caleb Benedict. You're probably gonna see more moves than we saw from Justin Martin. Bunch of fakes and another save though. Seneca throws up the arm and stops Caleb Benedict. So each team is stymied on their penalty shot opportunity. Two highly skilled players in Justin Martin and Caleb Benedict, but the goalies have figured it out at this point in the season. We remain at 3-3 with 3.48 to go in the half. I'm Steven Stamp. I hope you're enjoying this Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game. Mike Atwood, Ross Cree, extended battle. It's pulled out by Tyler Kahn. And they tie back up. Ross Cree still going after it. Atwood comes away with it. Casey Swamp on him. Nice pass from Atwood across. Oakley Thomas had to go up and get it, but Atwood got out of some pressure, and the offense is all set. Here's Patrick Timothy. Feeds it through to Oakley Thomas. He tries to hit the cutter, but it's a bit high for Krikowski, and it's almost over and back. Nice heads-up play by Timothy to stop that one from going over and back, but they've only got four to shoot. They can get it back, but the bouncer goes straight out off the rebound to Dylan Donahue. Oh. Nice wheels to get by a couple, and he's tossed to the ground. And Oakley Thomas is going to get a penalty. He doesn't like it, but you can call it's a holding call as he tied him up. Thomas saying, I just used my stick to get him down. Sorry, John Civic says, nope, that is a penalty. So again, Bill O'Brien still in there serving his two minutes on the penalty that the all Americans use their penalty shot on. Justin Martin is in. And now we will have a power play for the Spark as Oakley Thomas goes off to serve two minutes or less. Benedict will start at the top of the ball as they go strong right. Boy, Syracuse would love to get him going. Again, sock trick yesterday for Benedict. Actually had a seventh goal waved off on a, on a um, crease violation. Benedict will pick up Jimerson. Nice pass ahead. Oh, Dylan Hill, it just popped away from him. He reached back to catch it with one hand, looked good, but then he turned his attention to the net and lost it. He gets it back. Jay Chubb on him. Shovel pass to Woodland. He splits the D, gets it back. Remember, Jim Thorpe is shorthanded. Nice pass out to Jimerson. There's Mike Atwood. Brett Beto. Vito throws it down as the last couple seconds are ticking off the 30. <laughs> Schulzke makes the path out, pass out. Here comes Caleb Benedict. Syracuse just getting the rest of their O out there. There's Rio Johnson. Hank Delisle behind the net. We'll see if they try to work him. Now he comes out. Benedict. They're having a little struggle making the catches. That one's going to bounce into the bench and Syracuse will have to go back on D. 50 seconds though, still on the penalty. So if they can get possession after the 30, they'll still have time to go and have a shot on the power play. They won't have a lot of time. Austin moves it ahead. Here's Tyler Kahn. That's the cutter going to the net and make a print up. Nice job by Zimmel to pick him up. Kahn spins, 15 on the shot clock. Behind the back from Smith. Cathers had to be sharp, but he was. 
21 seconds, 20 now left on the power play. How much time will Syracuse have? Don't want to be taking a shot with a couple of seconds left and springing Oakley Thomas on a potential breakaway. Yeah, they're just gonna wait. I assume, no, Rio Johnson shoots. Two seconds, one. Thomas is released. Nice hustle though by Sky Sunday to get back and make sure there was no breakout transition opportunity. Thomas does get the ball here. We're into the final minute. Behind the back pass, gets away. It was grabbed by Cam Simpson. Simpson, back to Thomas, 15 to shoot. There's Riley Johnson, that one's wide. Eight on the shot clock. Drive to the net, that one's wide as well. Just three on the shot clock. Hill gets one, it's stopped by Cathers. 30 seconds left. I think Syracuse will use their timeout. Yeah, they're gonna take their timeout. 28.3 left on the shot clock. Or sorry, 28 left on the shot clock. 28.3 on the game clock. It just ran a bit after play was blown down. So now it says 27 on the shot clock and 27.6 on the game clock. So virtually identical. I would imagine they will pull Edmund Cathers, go with six attackers and just wait for the last shot. What an entertaining first half of action in the Jim Thorpe Challenge. I'm Steven Stamp, pleased to be bringing you this action from First Arena in Elmira. There's Coach Ron Kogan on the right with that pretty sweet beaded spark necklace. He was pretty bummed when play was suspended after five weeks of the PBLA and things have to be stopped because he had just had that completed for him. So he just made it and he didn't get a chance to wear it. So when the PBL came on board and uh, they got things rolling again, got this Jim Thorpe challenge going, he was excited to put that beauty on. All Americans heading back to their end. <laughs> Looks like Justin Martin, Brett Beto, Jonathan Jimerson. I think Dalen Hill and Tyler Kahn will be the defenders for this last set for them. The righties for Syracuse are Caleb Benedict, number 10, of course, Jay Chubb, number 12, and Tommy Palasek down low, number 8. Oh, and right, Sky Sunday, they got the four righties. That's Delisle passing it across. Dylan Lyons, the other lefty, number 11, in the slot. A couple of guys in the slot. 18 to go. The goalie is pulled. They do have the six attackers. They look like they're looking shot. Benedict's going to rip it. It's blocked. It won't be over and back. So he can track it down. They're down to six seconds. Five. Long pass to Palasek. He takes a shot. That's going to go up and out of play. He had... Sky Sunday in front, but I think Palasek thought he had to get that one off. Now he does have to try and beat the buzzer. Can't score, and we will go to the half with one of the lowest scores at halftime in all of the PBL action we have seen. 3-3, no lack of excitement though, between the Jim Thorpe All-Americans and the Syracuse Spark. Thanks for being with us here on Lacrosse TV to see the championship game of the Jim Thorpe Challenge of the PBL. I'm Steven Stamp, pleased to have you with us. We are gonna take a break for 15 minutes and we'll be back with what should be a thrilling second half. Hello lacrosse friends and welcome back to the championship game of the Jim Thorpe Challenge in professional, or sorry, players box lacrosse. I am Steven Stamp. This is PBL Jim Thorpe Challenge action. Gold medals on the line. And it has been a dandy of a first half. Three goals each for the Syracuse Spark and the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. Tremendous commitment to taking away transition, to playing defense. Both goalies, Craig Senek for Jim Thorpe in their cream with the blue stripes. And Edmund Cathers for the spark in their black fading to blue have been ex excellent. Ross Cree tries to run through that faceoff. Almost has it, Tommy Palasek grabs it. And Syracuse has the first possession of the second half. Finds Dylan Lyons off the, off the bench. Well, Syracuse is just waiting to see someone like Lyons or Caleb Benedict explode. Benedict with the sock trick yesterday in the semis. As Syracuse beat Elmira 14-9. Sky Sunday stopped by Seneca. And here's a breakout rumbling up the floor. Nice wheels by Tyler Klein. Gets it ahead to Dalen Hill who misses the net. The spin by Jimerson. He misses the net as well. 
It's snagged there, bouncing up off the rebound by Tim Zimmel. Sprints up over center, nice wheels, gets it into the offensive zone. Watched by Justin Martin. Here's Benedict. Oh, he gets underneath, shoots, stop though. Tried to go five hole and Seneca just took it away. Caleb Benedict looking a little bit frustrated, I think. You know, after the great game he had yesterday, he really wants to make something happen. It will, he has got skills. Great pass by Lane Smith, but I think Ben Austin got a little overexcited, ready to shoot before he had quite corralled the pass. Nice pass from Woodland though. That one stopped by Cathers on the shot by Kent Baker Printup. Bit swap by Austin. Comes down, it pops out. Carmen Papa almost had it, but it's Austin that gets it. Papa knocks down Austin. I think that's a good no call. You could hear the Jim Thorpe bench calling for something, but it looked like Austin was kind of losing his balance. Anyway, I thought, I mean. Here's Kyler Kilgore. Offside shot, saved by Cathers. Cam Simpson gets the rebound, and it's a fresh 30. Now there's a penalty coming, delayed call to Syracuse. Craig Seneca gets to the bench, and that is the man off the bench with the ball, Brett Beto, the extra, oh no, he was the fifth guy, the extra attacker is just coming now. He's up high, sneaking in, it's Rod Squire, but they go to the cutting Simpson. It's down, picked up by Sky Sunday, and the penalty will be adjudicated. That's a penalty call to Caleb Benedict. As mentioned, he's looking frustrated. He looks up at the ceiling and breathes a big frustrated sigh. I think it is getting to him. He had such success yesterday. He has been creating some chances today, but just hasn't been able to finish. What a tremendous young player. Again, still has a year of junior eligibility remaining. He's 21 this year. <laughs> Smith is top of the power play as they go strong left with Oakley Thomas getting it back from Curtis Woodland. Thomas feeds it through, Lane Smith, a little reverse whip, tried the quick release but he went wide. Here's Eddie Buhal. Bill O'Brien staying back on D because Curtis Woodland is hung up on the offensive zone. So it'll be a three on four in the penalty kill. Buhal gets to the bench and then get another player out. That's Palisak taking the pass there. Eight left on the shot clock. Lane Smith picks off that pass. He will jog up the floor. I'm telling you, Lane Smith is fast. If we get him to see him take off, he is moving these days. An absolute force out on the floor. Gets it back. They set up the power play. Woodland rips one, scores. Curtis Woodland, who was good yesterday, but just hasn't found the mark yet today. He finds it there, no question. And an absolute sidearm blast from Curtis Woodland. Here's the replay. Oh, just grazes in off the inside of that far post. One goal lead for the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. And then Brett Beto gets the ball back for them. They're gonna drive down, try and get one again immediately after that power play marker, put them in front. But Syracuse will slow them down a little. Here comes Dalen Hill. Oh, Syracuse really committing to their defense. There's a bit of space though. Beto runs through the check from Biro. Thought there may have been a bit of a hole as Biro tried to slow him down, but nothing called. And here comes Tim Zimmel. Now there's a penalty coming. It'll be an illegal substitution to Jim Thorpe. Cather's making his way to the bench, as is Zimmel. will have a couple of forwards come out for Syracuse. They're saying, just hold it, slow down, let's get our six guys out. They do now. Sunday takes it. He's got room, passes back door. Oh, <laughs> save, I think it was the post, actually, that stopped Rio Johnson on a beautiful quick stick. As Seneca came flying over. Now Johnson's gonna let it go again. That one's wide. Comes out to Sky Sunday though, they've still got 20 on the shot clock after the reset. Here's Rio Johnson again, three, four quarters, still can't find his spot, a foot save by Seneca. Johnson's gonna get one and he has scored some beautiful goals this year. Benedict over to Johnson. Back to Benedict, that one's wide, no it was stopped, so it's a fresh 30s, it went off the hand of Craig Seneca. Chubb gets it and gives it immediately to Sky Sunday. There's Hank Delisle behind the net. Hard pass ripped out but it is grabbed, picked off by the by Dalen Hill and then scooped up by Jonathan Jimerson. 
And we're going to have the illegal substitution. The in-home player will come and serve two minutes or less for illegal substitution unless Syracuse opts for the penalty shot. Well, I think Ron Kogan's keeping that one in his pocket for now as we're only four and a half minutes into the third quarter. Again, each team can opt for once per half, can go with a penalty shot in lieu of a power play advantage for two minutes. Hank Delisle will start with the ball. A career highlight for him, such a talented young player. Back in the 2012 U19 World Field Lacrosse Championships in Turku, Finland, Delisle had a hat trick, including the game-winning goal as the Iroquois Nationals at the time beat the U.S. for the first time that the Iroquois had beaten a U.S. team in an international event. Randy Stotts also had a hat trick in that game. Here's Jimerson who was streaking away, then lost the ball, gets it back, and that's blocked by Caleb Benedict. Boy, his offense has not been coming through today so far. It hasn't quite been what he was hoping for, but defensively, Benedict has played a very good game. That rip from Woodland off the goaltender. Sky Sunday picks up the rebound, pass ahead to Delisle. Not sure he realized Justin Martin was closing on him, but it is a reset. Delisle back to Benedict. He's on his offside, back to Delisle. Sky Sunday to the top. He's going to tell him to slow down, let's set up the power play, and gets the pass over to Dylan Lyons. Going back up to Sunday. Benedict quickly back to Sunday. Hard rip. That was so close. They're saying it was in. Real or Benedict, Benedict threw his hands up. I want to get a replay of that one. Dalen Hill with the shot on the other end. He goes through the crease. Can't play it. Can't even block the guy from getting to it. That should be blown down. It is. And away we go. Good call there. Rio Johnson takes the pass. Well, that one coming from underneath hit the crossbar. And it was so close to going in and tying things up. Here's Benedict, hard underhand pass to Donahue. Dylan Lyons, Lyons needs to go to the net. He is, can make things happen when he uses his frame, his size and strength and skill to get in there. Now, loose ball by push called, and Jim Thorpe will get it. Mike Atwood throws it ahead. Just a few seconds left in the penalty. Lane Smith with the jumping attempt, just misses on the far side. Here comes the spark back the other way. Dylan Lyons just says, slow it down. Lyons from Nedrow, New York. Just outside of Syracuse, part of the Onondaga Nation, where the Onondaga Nation Arena is. Beautiful facility. And of course, just down the road in Nedrow is the Onondaga Field Nation Fieldhouse, which is one of the most beautiful lacrosse rinks you will ever see. You have to get there if you get a chance. Shot from Donahue, stopped by Craig Seneca. Delayed penalty coming to Syracuse. Imagine it's a, another illegal substitution. They've been quite strict with the application of the rules over the weekend. In the semifinals held yesterday here at First Arena in Elmira. Six attackers out. A blast from the outside. Krakowski thought he had a chance. Now we wait and see if Randy Kreischel will use his penalty shot or if he's going to wait as well. And we actually will go to the media timeout, so he's going to have some time to think we may have a penalty shot when we come back, or a power play for the Jim Thorpe All-Americans. I'm Stephen Stamp. This is the championship game of the PBL Jim Thorpe Challenge on Lacrosse TV. Welcome back, Lacrosse friends. We are underway. It will be the power play. Lane Smith starting at the top. Casey Swamp to serve the two minutes or less for the illegal substitution for Syracuse. And while he was in the box, as we were waiting for play to get going, he took a selfie with a young fan. Love that interaction. Up to Woodland. Hops and, hops and Buhal at the top on the penalty kill. O'Brien and Bureau down low. Here's Woodland. Tries to get it to Lane Smith. Doesn't get there. But Oakley Thomas picks it up off the boards. Woodland rips it. Nice save. Cathers. And then pounces on the rebound. As Cam Seneca was trying to get in and scoop that ball up. Nice job by Cathers to take that option away. Here's Donahue running out away from trouble. Nice little fake and then sprints down to the corner, changes direction, double team coming, gets away from it. Nice job by Dylan Donahue, still got some wheels. Lobs it over to Zach Hops. Hops with a big fake, the crow hop looking to shoot, didn't take it. Now they're down to five on the shot clock and they're going to send Hops back to play D. 
Pal Pal Palasek and Donahue go to the bench to get defenders out and then a shot at the last moment by Carmen Papa. <laughs> Krakowski gets it back. Woodland steps around the screen, goes down low to Justin Martin. It gets loose and Dwight Barrow Jr. pops it away, throws it ahead to Papa. Just realizes the check's coming, but Woodland strips it. Papa gets back on him. Thought Woodland had it, but the ball's actually still in the turf. It's swatted back into the end, into the th Jim Thorpe end. Here's Krakowski and Papa racing for it. Oh, delayed penalty coming. I think they're gonna call Carmen Papa for a hold. Jim Thorpe would actually be pretty smart to just take a shot here. Lane Smith is going to do just that. Now the penalty to Swamp is already over. So now it'll just be a, another two minutes if they fail to score here. All right, I wouldn't be surprised to see the penalty shot. I think Lane Smith will take it. That's my prediction. Here comes Martin to Woodland. Just misses, gets up out of play. And Papa will go to the box. No indication yet that they're going to use a penalty shot. And Randy Chrysler is actually talking to Daniel Krakowski about power play positioning and plans. So I think they're going to go ahead and take the man advantage. Save the penalty shot for a bit later. Pop it in the box. Oakley Thomas will start with it up top again. Strong left with Woodland and Smith joining him as the lefties. Boo Holland hops up top, killing the penalty. O'Brien and Biro down low. Papa, one of the regular penalty killers. That one off the, off the post. Here's Smith back up to Woodland. Thomas taking his time. Quick release from Seneca, but it goes wide. Saved by Cathers. Biro takes a swat, manages to get the pass off. Here comes Eddie Buhal, gets over center. Nice job of being aware of the double team coming and knowing where his outlet was. Smart play by Eddie Buhal, another one of these guys who's been a solid field across player, but learning the box game and obviously picking it up very well. Hops, this one over to Delisle. Four on the shot clock. He tries to get one, doesn't get through. Gets his own rebound back and does get that one on to Seneca. It's off the back of his arm and bounces immediately over. To Oakley Thomas, who got it ahead to Jimerson. Jimerson gives it to Justin Martin. They were looking. Here's Martin now. Right on top of the crease, but Jimerson misses his shot. Swamp knocks down his man as the ball sits in the crease and it's picked up by Cathers. Long outlet pass. He was running out of time on the four seconds. Didn't see anybody open, so decided to just lob it down, but didn't quite get it past. And Martin had it, hands it off there to Jonathan Jimerson. Martin blasts it, saved by Cathers. He is keeping the spark in it as the spark. I thought had the best of the play in the first quarter. Seemed to wander a bit more, maybe, as someone was mentioning to me in the half, but early in the game, but the Jim Thorpe All-Americans really putting the pressure on. Shovel pass attempt. Oh, bit of a mistake by Zimmel to just keep running away. That gave Martin the chance to get to the ball. Big hit by, by Bill O'Brien. Eliminated a scoring opportunity for Jimerson, and now he's all over Baker Printup, but Baker Printup gets it, tries the dunk. O'Brien steps over him. <laughs> Baker Printup stands up, and O'Brien had to kind of move past him. He's going to make the long pass to Papa. That's going to bite himself out of play, and that will be possession going to the All-Americans. Well, we thought it was low scoring at 3-3 through the half. There's been only one goal so far here in the third quarter. And it's been great. It's exciting. It's fun. It doesn't have to be high scoring to be good lacrosse. Mike Atwood with the bouncer runs into Bill O'Brien afterwards. Lane Smith gets it. Across the top of the formation to Kahn. Riley Johnson just missed the pass. O'Brien has it, takes a big hit from Lane Smith. The ball pops loose. O'Brien's gonna go back after it. 
loose ball foul called is after the ball was out of O'Brien's stick, he took another hit. Schultzke, nice lob pass across. Kind of tipped by Rio Johnson, who didn't realize it was headed for Jay Chubb. Was just trying to control the ball. It luckily for them fell to Chubb, 15 on the shot clock. Dylan Lyons, sidearm sweep shot. Nice job going around the, around the defender. That's a back in by Brett Beto. Controlled the ball and just stepped right into the crease with his right foot. It'll be a fresh 30 and possession for the spark. Tyler Conn argue, Con arguing, but yeah, no, that was a back end. Illegal pick called on Dylan Lyons as he flattened Cam Seneca, who's looking a little shaken up, but still hustles himself over to the bench to get a change and get the fresh legs on. Patrick Timothy, nice move to get through, but the shot was stopped, and then he was flattened by O'Brien just after he released the ball. Fresh 30 for the All-Americans. Kilgore and Woodland on the two-man game. Last some good two-man defense until they lose him. You don't want to lose Curtis Woodland. They're doing so well, and all of a sudden, Woodland allowed you to just pop free into the slot, but Edmund Cathers bails them out. Palasek the through the check from Woodland. Here's Sky Sunday. Over to Benedict. What can he make happen? Nice pass to Chubb. The stop. Delisle tried to grab it, but Seneca had it. 35 to play in the quarter. The pass doesn't connect. It's going to go to Benedict. Pulls up. Nice play. Very poised by Caleb Benedict to be in the double team, see where there was space, there was no danger, getting across to Hops, and they were able to set it up. 15 in the quarter. Syracuse waiting for the last shot. Cathers is staying in his bench. I guess maybe they won't wait for those, take a shot when they like it. Benedict spins away from Timothy. Pass doesn't get through to Hops, it's gonna be grabbed by Ben Austin, and the third quarter will expire just one goal in that 15 minute span, but what fun lacrosse. It is 4-3 through 45 minutes of play. We'll come back in a couple of minutes on Lacrosse TV with the championship game of the Jim Thorpe Challenge PBL action. I'm Steven Stamp and cannot wait to see how we decide the champion in the final frame. Coming up after this. Welcome back Lacrosse friends to the final quarter. Well, the final quarter of regulation time, at least we know, of the PBL Jim Thorpe Challenge championship game. It's four to three for the Jim Thorpe All-Americans over the Syracuse Spark. It has been a tremendous afternoon of lacrosse. Thank you for being with us. I am Steven Stamp. Delighted to be bringing you this exciting action from First Arena in Elmira. Remember the discussion with the officials talking to the captains, Dwight Biro for Syracuse and Rod Squire for Jim Thorpe. They will go back and pass on what they were told to their coaches. And then Ross Cree for Syracuse going left to right for the final quarter, defending the goal near their bench with Edmund Cathers between the pipes. Ross Cree facing off against Mike Atwood, going right to left, defending the goal near their bench as, Ed, as uh, Craig Seneca is between the pipes for them. Tyler Kahn has the ball, tries to pass it ahead to Jimerson who loses it but gets it back. He's going to the net, he'll slow things down. Looks to Dale and Hill, but instead he's gonna find the man, Lane Smith. Justin Martin goes to the bench to get a fresh pair of legs out as Sir, uh, Jim Thorpe sets up the O. Here's Lane Smith, rips one off the post. That comes all the way up just under our broadcast announcing area. It's a pretty nice catch by a fan right down below me. And then he handed it off to a young fan and a couple of rows in front of him. And he's stoked to get that game ball. Here's Patrick Timothy. Trying to get underneath Schultzke. Pretty nice job to recover. Hard side arm ripped by Jimerson. Cathers with the stop. Eddie Buhal. Dylan Lyons coming off the bench. You'll find him. Man coming. Nice heads up play by Rio Johnson to let him know it was coming and he stepped aside. Lyons takes it. Jay Chubb. Looking for a pick from Sky Sunday. It's the slip, and Sunday gets the shot. Oh, he passes back door. Just got away from Rio Johnson. Johnson loses the ball, but sprints out to get it back. Just a couple left on the shot clock. Donahue rips one. He gets it on. Jay Chubb has it. Reverse rip. What a goal. Jay Chubb. Silk from a sow's ear. 
as he picks up that long outside shot that was just intended to get a reset. It worked like a charm, and Jay Chubb, the reverse whip, a skipper. This is gorgeous. Look at Chubb, sprints in. Oh, the whip on that. Holy cow, he had a lot on that ball. Again, the long outside shot. You can see Chubb, awareness, and bounces it just in front of him with all kinds of power to get it up and over the arm and shoulder of Craig Seneca. Cree with a face-off violation, so the Thorpe All-Americans will have the first opportunity to respond here, but that's a great goal. We're tied 4-4. Behind the back shot, hits a defender. Ross Cree with a little trouble, so Austin gets on top of him. Schultzke goes after it, dives, but it is going to be picked up by the All-Americans. They just got seven to shoot. Bomb from the outside by Thomas is stopped. Edmund Cather is looking up the floor. He steps out of the crease to avoid the four-second count and then gets it to Zimmel, who sprints across center to beat the eight-second count. Here's Hank Delisle. Benedict, a couple of fakes. Now he goes to Palasek. Pop out the top, back to Palasek immediately. They've got Benedict on the crease. I think they decided it wasn't there. Oh, now the pass is made late. It was nowhere near anybody. Thomas fighting through pressure, makes it across. Carmen Pop a determined effort, but Thomas so strong, just wards it off. Cam Seneca. Martin back to Woodland. Blast him across the top. He loves that one coming over the top. I think Edmund Cathers was all ready for that though. Zachary Hopps running away from Woodland. Back to Dylan Lyons. Syracuse still making the change. If Rio Johnson's gonna pick this one up off the turf, it's Donahue coming out late. You know, behind the net to Lyons. Changes direction. Oh, backdoor attempt. They almost got it, but Sky Sunday was stopped. I think it was the post that got that one. Could have been Craig Seneca coming across with his, across with his hand. Woodland will slow it down. He needs to get off for a change. He's been back and forth. Tyler Kahn is it's three on five right now. The fifth Jim Thorpe All-American just getting out. It's Riley Johnson who'll take the pass now up at the restraining line over to Kahn. Toe drag. Nice strip by Dylan Lyons. Donahue adroitly steps back. Runs through the swat of Krikowski all the way to the restraining line, then goes back against the green, gets it to Delisle. Nice play by Donahue. Syracuse just getting their fifth attacker out. It's Bill O'Brien joining the fray. And Craig Kahn with a big collision. Delisle behind the back, right into the chest, the crest on the middle of the chest, though, of the All-Americans goalie, Craig Seneca. A little sidearm pass out to Lane Smith. He'll pass it ahead and go off. Eight second count. Eight second violation, Possession to Syracuse. It's 4-4, just under 11 to play here in the fourth quarter. I'm Steven Stamp, this is the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game on Lacrosse TV. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am and as much as the folks here in the arena are. Oh, quick attempt by Benedict, he just missed. Patrick Timothy goes up to get that one. Gets by Benedict, he throws the hip check. But Timothy runs through it, fakes the pass, shoots, scores! Patrick Timothy has two of the All-American's five goals, and that is the best thing he has done in an increasingly successful box lacrosse career. The Plantation, Florida native, absolutely racing up, takes the big hit. Fake, pulls it down, gets past his man and bounces one, a steep, high to low, and then headbutts the class in celebration. What a play by Patrick Timothy, his second. We will go to a media timeout with 10-19 to go in the fourth. We'll be back on the Cross TV. The Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship. I'm Stephen Stamp with the game. Thanks for being with us. Welcome back to the Cross Friends. Jim Thorpe has gone back up on a beautiful breakaway goal by Pat. Well, not even a breakaway goal, just a transition goal 
showing his speed, grit, and skill by Patrick Timothy to make it 5-4. With 10-19 to go in the fourth quarter of the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship. PBL action on Lacrosse TV. Bill O'Brien has the ball off the faceoff. Runs through one check. Puts his shoulder down. Get over center. Go through Mike Atwood. And that is a couple of big bodies colliding. It works out. O'Brien maintains possession for his time. And Syracuse will get the change finished. They're going to send Dylan Lyons back in the defensive zone. Now he'll come up and join. Only six seconds left on the shot clock. That one's wide by Sky Sunday. Johnson goes to the net. It's a goal. He lands right at the legs of Craig Seneca. And Rio Johnson, who has made some spectacular plays this year, has finished one there. Craig Seneca is looking shaken up. Mike Atwood is in. Okay, he did take a bit of a cross check, which drove him in. Here comes Johnson, picking up off the boards. Yeah, he was going across. Kyler Kilgore checked him a little bit. You got a, you've got a debate that you could have about whether that's goalie interference. But I think it would have been after the ball went into the net anyway. So the goal counts. It's 5-5. Just over five minutes into the fourth quarter. Wade Thompson has to talk to Craig Seneca. Make sure he's okay. And Seneca says, says he's fine and slowly gets back up to his feet. Brett Beto to take the draw here for Jim Thorpe. Ross Cree once again for the spark. Face off violation by Cree, so Beto will get possession. Jim Thorpe into the offensive zone. We've got Woodland coming off the bench, but Schultz with all kinds of pressure on Baker Prince up makes it hard for him to get it over there. Woodland does get it. Ross Cree meets him, and then nice slide help from Tim Zimmel. Here's Kritkowski into space on his opposite side. Cathers with the stop. I think we had an illegal pick as Buhal was knocked to the floor. It's going to be a Syracuse ball. Nice little short bounce pass outlet. The safe one to Zimmel from Cathers. Zimmel swims past Beto. Donahue to Lions. So much offensive talent. Players like Lane Smith and Justin Martin and Caleb Benedict. And all these guys, and we have a low scoring game because the defenses are committed. The forwards, the guys up in the offensive zone, committed to getting off and taking away transition. Look at the wheels from Sunday. He just sprint past Johnson. That pass was high for Papa, but it goes to Benedict. That works out pretty well, but he pings it off the far post. And you know what? He is looking a little bit better. We I saw, I said he looked frustrated earlier. He's looking like his confidence might have been shaken a bit. He looked very confident after that one. Can't believe he just barely missed it. I'm thinking Benedict might do something pretty soon. 5-5 five, five still, 8.15 to go. Right now in the fourth quarter. I'm Steven Stamp. This is the Jim Thorpe Challenge on Lacrosse TV. Shot coming. Scores! Dalen Hill waited, waited, waited. The patience pays off with a perfectly placed zipper to the top corner. It's 6 5. Thorpe goes ahead once again. And here's the replay. Oh. Looks even better on the replay, just over the shoulder of the shrugging Edmund Cathers. Hill, who showed great patience, waiting, 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 then rips it with alacrity once he decided it was time to go. Thompson and Creed tangled up in this extended face-off battle. That one gets onto it, protecting the ball. He's got it under his stick, clamping down, picks it up, it was just like the initial move of a, a face-off. Penalty coming now to Syracuse's late call. I didn't see what it was. There were a lot of people in that scrum. Extra attacker is out. Oakley Thomas gets it over to Martin.
by Carmen Papa. Rolled across to Squire. Two seconds on the shot clock. They get one off in time, but Martin had to really get it away quickly, and Cather was able to just take that in the chest. Outlet pass. Pelisek can't get it, and Justin Martin is in position between him and the wall and the ball. And Martin comes away with it. Fakes the pass and then gets it ahead to Baker Printup. Nice job by Martin. Baker Printup gets it across center. He's going to take it back. And Jim Thorpe will set up on the power play, but it ends as Ross Cree is released. We're back to five on five with 5.28 to play. There's a shot from Blaine Smith. He is run over by Ross Cree. It's a loose ball foul, and possession will go to the Warrior, to the uh, All-Americans. And Lane Smith looked a little shaken up. He pops back up. Baker print up. Shovels it out to Smith. Scores! How did he make that fake? He was starting to fall. Look at he's tumbling towards the man a bit. And somehow threw a fake as he was losing his balance. Just watch the play. There he is. He picks it up. Oh, he wasn't losing his balance at all. He just jab stepped and then ran across. That's how he did it. He's got great hands and great feet. Oh, he was totally in control. Hard fake to get Cather to bite. And then tucks it home. Lane Smith, what a beauty of a goal. 8-6, 5-14 to play as the whistle goes. And we're back underway. It's swatted ahead. Gets to Boo Hall. He just flings it over his head. Double team on Atwood. They're near center. Danger zone, but Thomas. The whirly bird to spin away. Here's a chance for Khan. He misses. It's going to be grabbed by Schultzke. He's got Zimmel ahead, gets it to him over center. Zimmel has lots of space. Under five to play. It's a two goal game, 8 6. Jim Thorpe. 440 to play. Benedict, sidearm pass to Johnson. Tried to go back to Sky Sunday. He missed it, and Thomas is on him. It's still loose. Benedict sneaks in there. Syracuse wanting a loose ball push. Sunday was kind of knocked over there. They are going to run out of time on the 30 with no call coming. The shot clock will expire with 4.15 to go. Jim Thorpe has it. Ben Austin steps across center and hands it off to Kilgore. All right, champion will be crowned shortly. Right now, the Jim Thorpe All-Americans have a grip on that title, but it is tenuous yet. Shot wide and outside, it bounced off the boards, back out to Krikowski. He rips one, hits Cathers, gets stuck in the gear. Oh, well, actually it's underneath him? No, it is in the gear, it's well into his pad. He had to reach down past his knee, it looked like. Papa twirls up into the offensive zone. 3.30 to go. The 8.60 lead stands for Jim Thorpe. Donahue. Tough from the top. Gets to Poppy. He's trying to go underneath. Curtis Woodland. Good defensive play. Donahue over to Lions. Five to shoot. Lions Rockets one in. We've been waiting for something from the big young man. And he absolutely paints the inside of that post to pull the spark back within one. 3.12 to play. And look at this. At the top, just shoots around the defender. Maybe a screen. That is gorgeous shooting from Dylan Lyons.
half possession. We've seen in instances like this over the weekend and over the last couple weeks. Yeah, it's going to be Syracuse ball because we've seen fairly minimal possession counting as possession and starting the eight, eight second count. That was close. So with 21.3 seconds to go in regulation time, Syracuse takes their timeout. It is 8-8. Eight, eight. Are they going to pull? I imagine they're going to pull Cathers and wait for a last shot with the six on five. We've seen them take shots a little early in situations like this. You just don't want the ball rolling down the floor and into an empty net for a championship winning goal while your goalie's on the bench. So I would imagine they'll wait and won't shoot till the last couple of seconds. 21.3, they'll have some time to go. I'm Steven Stamp. This is the PBL Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship game. What a game it has been. And the drama is only building in these final seconds. Thank you to all of you for watching. Big thanks to Steve Donner, head of Mammoth Sports and Entertainment, and the players and coaches of the PBL, Players Box Lacrosse, who have worked together to make this Jim Thorpe Challenge happen after the PBLA season had to be suspended. So many good things happening early on in the PBLA season, but it just did not, was not able to continue. Tumultuous start as any new league is going to face an up and down roller coaster ride. But boy, we could not get anything more exciting. Jim Thorpe and Syracuse met in the first game ever in the PBLA back at Six Nations on December 29th. They met in the first game of the Jim Thorpe Challenge Round Robin Series. Jim Thorpe won both of those. Syracuse is looking to win when it matters most. 21.3 to go. Palasek comes out. Four righties as Caleb Benedict is off on his offside. I think they're hoping they're just going to kind of miss him. I feel like they're going to pay attention. Ten seconds. Eight. They start to go. Benedict gets it. Steps out. Sidearm pass. Lions drop the ball. Picks it back up. Three seconds. Pass through is knocked down. Hopefully Thomas tried to get a shot on the empty net. It popped out of his stick. And we... Oh, that, they did get a shot. The length of the floor... And it, I think it was, it was either Jonathan Jimerson or Justin Martin, and it went off the crossbar. Obviously, it wouldn't have counted the buzzer; it already sounded. But it was fun. So we are going to overtime. It will be sudden death or sudden victory, depending on your preference. We will have a quick break. I think it's two minutes or three minutes before we go to the overtime. They're just explaining to the coaches. I haven't had a lot of overtime during the season. Let's play a game. Let's everybody pick our win, our game-winning goal scorers for each team. I'll pick mine. You can pick yours. I'll trust you. I'm going to tell you mine. You can just tell yours to yourself or your friends you're watching the game with. I hope you're enjoying this game on Lacrosse TV. <laughs> I am going to take Lane Smith for Jim Thorpe because he is so dangerous and can make something out of nothing. And I'm going to take Caleb Benedict for Syracuse because it feels like he is on the verge of making something big happen. Whoever wins will definitely be a deserving champion. You can let me know at Stamplax on Twitter. If you want to let me know who you picked for your goal scorers. I'm very curious. I mean, Curtis Woodland would be a good pick for Jim Thorpe. I think Justin Martin would be a good pick in transition. For Syracuse. Dylan Lyons is due once again. Maybe Tommy Palasek. Maybe he's the guy.
Palisak, who went to Syracuse after a couple of years at Johns Hopkins. Two huge programs. He's really adapting to the box game. From Rocky Point, New York. Is he the guy who's going to get first possession? It's Carmen Papa coming out for the draw. Ross Cree has taken most of the faceoffs for Syracuse. A little surprising to see Papa out there right now going up against Mike Atwood for Jim Thorpe. We'll put 10 minutes up on the board. But the we're not going to need all of it, I wouldn't think. Well, you never know. We've only had eight goals. We had just one goal in the, uh, was it the second quarter? Third quarter? Unbelievable. Stick around with us after the game for the presentation of the championship. The key players on the floor are the goalies. Eben Cathers for Syracuse. Craig Seneca for Jim Thorpe. Draw team for Jim Thorpe is Justin Martin and Oakley Thomas in the defensive end. Mike Atwood at the dot. Dalen Hill and Jonathan Jimerson, Jimerson up in the ozone. Papa to take it for Syracuse. They just have Tim Zimmel up ahead and three guys on the defensive line. Biro, Buhal, and O'Brien. And it's Buhal who races in to get it. First possession in the overtime to Syracuse. Papa takes that pass. Delisle gets it. Martin was racing out on him, thought better of it and stayed back. 14 on the shot clock. Sky Sunday over to Benedict. Cuts underneath, shoots, misses on the far side. Who's gonna get there first? It's Carmen Papa who's there. They've just got three to shoot. He lost the ball, it didn't really matter, but now Justin Martin has it. It's a two on two with Dalen Hill. He's on his offside. Lane Smith streaking it off the bench. Passes, Dalen Hill shoots, stopped by Cathers. Lane Smith was lurking, trying to grab that loose ball, but it was Syracuse possession, and Rio Johnson will lob one up to Tommy Palasek. Chances at either end already here in the first minute of overtime for the Jim Thorpe Challenge Championship. Donahue to Lyons. He's going to try and go underneath. Nice job by Ben Austin, knocking him down. Lyons tried to throw the pass out. Didn't get much on it, it goes to Austin. He's on the run. He's got Here it is with Woodland, he rips it. That's why, just gonna be an over and back. Syracuse is gonna get possession. Palasek will go down and start with it for the spark and Caleb Benedict is coming to meet him. Delisle moves it quickly over to Sky Sunday. Delisle. Big check from Baker Print up, but he's still got the ball. Shovels it. Benedict finds Rio Johnson. Bouncer. Don't think it touched the goalie. Comes back to Johnson. They've got eight to shoot. That does touch the goalie. Casey Swam trying to get the rebound, but it's Baker Print up, and they call him back in because he reached out and picked up the ball while he was standing in the crease and pulled it into himself. Syracuse will get it at a fresh 30. We're two minutes gone in overtime. Delisle's going to start with it. Jay Chubb is there to take the pass. This is Donahue. Austin watching him. Big pick from Rio Johnson. They go to Papa. Justin Martin on him. Tries to duck underneath. Shovels it. Oh, just tipped away. What a play by Cam Simpson to take it away from Delisle. But Johnson has it. Chubb shot. It's wide. Six left on the shot clock as it comes back to Rio Johnson. He one hand flicks it down to Delisle, who gets a shot on. Not much chance going in as, as Craig Seneca wisely was just on his post. Did get a reset, but they didn't have anything around. That's almost an over and back. It is an over and back. Great play. Tim Zimmel to force Squire over center. And then Zimmel steps across the line and puts himself in a little jeopardy, but runs out of it. 
Kwiatkowski watching him as he throws it back up to Caleb Benedict. The fifth forward getting out there is, Ross, is Sky Sunday. Benedict to Hops. Zach Hops pulls it down, fires just wide. Benedict's going to track it down. Five on the shot clock. A couple of spark go to change. Oh, he gets a shot to the far side. And Seneca had to make quite a foot save as that was headed for the far corner from a mile downtown. Here's a man on the break. Saved by Cathers. Buhal comes away with it. Buhal looking unsure where he wants to go. He's just running around. Everyone all around him, but he gets the pass to Delisle. Good heads up play. Finds Rio Johnson. Papa drifting in as the last man on the attack. He's up high. He looks like the dangerous one. He's got it. This side to Lions. Swims past Woodland. Shoots. Stopped by, Cat, by Seneca. He's looking the outlet pass. Tries to get it to Woodland. Can't get it there. It's grabbed by Delisle. Delisle's run over. Oh, what a play. And there's a penalty coming. It's going to be on Curtis Woodland. Or is it? It's Brett Beto, I think. Woodland was the first one to make contact. And then Beto followed up, and he is being sent to the box. So we're going to keep playing. Sorry. Apparently it's not so.
Dwight Biro. You can see, watch Dwight Biro, the captain, number nine. This ball goes in, and Dwight Biro right here, he says, no, that's me. Taps himself on the chest and says, I screened you. I don't think Edmund Cather saw that ball at all. Tim Zimmel takes the ball, gets it over center. Boy, he's made a couple of big, smart plays here in the overtime period. Delisle over to Caleb Benedict. Pick from Chubb. Benedict rips one low to high, misses. Can Chubb stop it from going over and back? He can't. You look like you want to go to the bench. He's gonna go back and play. Instead, you can't start possession on the restart with the ball in front of the crease, sort of rolled into the corner, and Cam Simpson has it. Blue Hall on him. Rod Squire. Big pick. They try to hit the roll, they do! Jimerson stopped, great play, great pick, great roll. Good dive, but the stop by Cathers, and Syracuse has it. 3.15 to go as continue, we continue in overtime. Papa chasing down Krikowski. Now Donnie who's gonna pick him up. Krikowski, look like he might be thinking about getting a dive. There was no way. Woodland couldn't catch that one. Here's Benedict. He's looking everywhere. Where are his options? He'll just hang on to it for now until everyone gets out and then hits Rio Johnson coming off the bench. I thought Johnson was going to shoot. I wouldn't have been surprised. He can take some unorthodox choices, and he can make them work. Shot from Sky Sunday, who scored the goal earlier for Syracuse. There's Benedict. No angle. Puts it onto the backside of the match. Wouldn't have counted anyway, because he was his head of his stick was behind the goal line, so that wouldn't have been any good if it had bounced in off the leg of Seneca. Late in the shot clock, he was just trying to make something happen. Justin Martin, what great feet. The pass though doesn't get through to Austin as Chubb was there and eventually it's picked up by Casey Swamp. Swamp is just gonna keep going. Hands up play by him. He scored a beautiful transition goal a couple weeks ago. And you can see he saw that there was space as long as he got over center and kept moving, he would not get trapped and risk the over and back. Great diving attempt by Chubb, the save by Seneca as Chubb is knocked down. Martin takes the pick, the pass and is hit by Delisle. And Dylan Lyons runs into the... Oh my goodness. The official got in the way of Dylan Lyons chasing down the, the ball carrier. And then gave the penalty to Hank Delisle. Now is that, it looked like a misconduct. Yeah, it's a 10, so they're not going to be shorthanded. Thank goodness, that would be awful if they were made shorthanded by this. Jim Thorpe will get the ball. It's five on five. <laughs> Wendell wants a power play. He's not getting it. Bigger print-ups going to the bench, and Patrick Timothy will come out instead as the fifth member of the attack here. Gets away for Krakowski, breakaway! Eddie Buhal, all alone with Craig Seneca. Timothy chasing him down, scores! No, they're gonna say it didn't go in. Seneca got some of it, just enough, I guess, to keep it out. Here's Zimmel, great hustle by Patrick Timothy to chase down the man, force him to rush. Zimmel is knocked down, falls loose. Squire tried to pick it up, Timothy tried to pick it up. But coming away with it is Tim Zimmel. He is really having an overtime. We've got a minute five left in this first overtime. Papa goes underneath, dives, scores! What a beauty! Kerman Papa! Seneca's livid. Squire's livid. They're disagreeing. I don't know what they're arguing. I didn't think he was in the crease. They all kind of seemed to stop a little bit. I don't know if they thought something had happened. Let's see what Papa does. 
Nope. Oh, he was in the crease after the shot. I think he's okay. This should be a good look. He gets under Oakley Thomas. Good, good, good. He's okay. Beautiful play by Papa. And he buries it. I think he was out of the crease. I think he was good. He was close. Carmen Papa, could that be the championship goal? 57 seconds to go. Cree and Atwood. Syracuse has the ball. Biro, oh, I think they might have wanted to use their time out there. That's an over and back. He tried to fling it ahead, but the damage was already done. Jim Thorpe gets it. The clock keeps running. They've lost about seven seconds. That pass gets away. It goes to Cathers. The right breakout pass to Zimmel. Just hold the ball. Just hold the ball. Zimmel shoots. Dalen Hill gets it in the Thorpe Hall America. Jim Thorpe Hall Americans will have another chance and they'll take their time out. You had to hold the ball. <laughs> and Dwight Biro is walking over to the bench with his hands over his head. I think he's saying we were trying to get a timeout. I don't know if they called it. I can't believe they went for the outlet pass there. And Zimmel shot. Tim Zimmel's been great in the overtime, but just eat it, run out, and kill as much time as you can. Now, 19.1 seconds to go. Jim Thorpe will pull Craig Seneca to the bench. He'll go with six attackers and try and tie it up yet again in this overtime period. Matt Atwood, one of the really good offensive minds. Up and coming coaches in the game of the cross, drawing up a play for his offensive group. The Syracuse players heading out to play D are Eddie Buhal, Carmen Papa, Zachary Hops, Bill O'Brien, and Dwight Barrow, the veterans. The calm presences have been gathered to the pipes. The lefties, as you'd expect, Oakley Thomas, Lane Smith, and Curtis Woodland. Also, Jonathan Jimerson, the fourth lefty, running the ball up for Jim Thorpe. Krikowski on this side, Cam Seneca down there. Goes to Krikowski, 12 seconds. They can shoot, you don't have to wait. Big hit by O'Brien on Lane Smith. Smith is down. Now he's just gonna roll it up the floor. And what's that call? Syracuse take a timeout? I think they may have. Are we I'm not sure if we have a timeout call? Didn't see the indication. <laughs> Must be. So Syracuse had their timeout, they take it. There's 4.3 seconds. Now, will the ball play start with the oh they go back to 6.3? They've added some time. Clock has been reset to 6.3. So what do you do if you're Syracuse? Craig, Cam, Craig Seneca obviously will stay on the bench for Jim Thorpe. They might switch some guys out. I can see, uh, I mean, Justin Martin is out there. Patrick Timothy is on the floor. You've got to go with some guys who can get the ball back, not just your best offensive players for a shot if you get it back. There are no timeouts left. It'll just keep going. Dwight Barrow is discussing with the officials what's going to happen. The ball will start down in the Syracuse end, which is actually probably a break for them. If they want, they could just lob the ball down the floor as long as they don't hit the scoreboard overhead. Throw it up or any of the lights hanging, but throw it up fairly high, let it bounce down the floor. I don't see how it can get down that end on a high lobbed pass, get picked up by Jim Thorpe and get back for a shot. Papa will go into the crease to take it. Martin, Timothy, all around him. He's just going to stand in the crease. The clock's off. That's what I was wondering. He can, now he runs out. Great job by Carmen Papa to finish it off. And the Syracuse Spark are the Jim Thorpe Challenge champions. 10 to 9. An overtime thriller. And Carmen Papa, who has been spectacular for them throughout this season, finishes it off with the ball in his stick. Syracuse wanted this one bad, and they have got it. The champions, your
to present the championship. I'd like to welcome to midfield Steve Donner from Pro Box Lacrosse, who will present the championship trophy. <laughs> Dwight Bureau comes forward to accept the championship trophy from Steve Donner. Bureau goes back to join his teammates. Bill O'Brien, one of the alternate captains, gives him a big hug, I believe. Carmen Popper, the other alternate. Syracuse will celebrate Jim Thorpe. Tremendous effort. And that will do it for our coverage of the PBL Jim Thorpe Challenge on Lacrosse TV. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks to Lacrosse TV for helping to spread the word and spread the games. I hope you can all enjoy have all enjoyed them. And Steve Donner has expressed a lot of optimism about making something happen next year. But until then, we will leave you with We Are the Champions playing for the Syracuse Spark the Jim Thorpe Challenge champions for 2023.